this fly here. Okay, shit, this is so hard. What is real food anyway? I wanted to make this video to cover the basics on my approach on nutrition. So basically it's about having the same food as our ancestors were using before farming and processing. So maintaining a diet of foods with high nutritional value like meat, fish, eggs, fruit, vegetables, seeds and nuts. I believe that these foods give us the proper nourishment to live in an optimal way. I've been doing this for almost 10 years and I noticed so many improvements. I have higher energy levels, I basically never get sick and when I do my workout I have much more endurance. So you base your diet on natural foods and you cut out the ultra processed foods. And that means most of the stuff that you would find in the supermarket. I think there are many foods that we tend to think are healthy but are actually also processed. Most yogurts, cereal bars, sauces, most packaged foods you can find in the supermarket. That's why sometimes it seems kind of complicated, but actually it's quite simple, stick to natural. Science seems to support that many of these habits can help prevent all kinds of diseases. So what are the first steps you should be taking if you want to lead this kind of lifestyle? Well, I'll walk you through it while showing you how I did it in my own life. Now, I've always been mindful of what I eat. I was diagnosed with celiac disease when I was a baby. So my family and I have always checked the labels of food products and cooked looking for alternatives to wheat. However, I now realize that I was completely addicted to sugar. I had huge amounts of ice cream, Ben and Jerry's, Hagen Dazs, I loved the Belgian chocolate and also fruit juices. I loved the apple juice. Which leads me to the first step. Stop taking refined sugar. Get rid of it, throw it in the trash, it's not helping anyone. Quitting sugar is hard, especially in the beginning. After all this time, I still struggle with it. It's linked to so many different conditions, not just diabetes, which isn't widely known, but also cancer, chronic disease, and Alzheimer's disease. It also affects your DNA and accelerates the aging process. And what makes this so hard is how addictive it is. I could go on and on about how terrible refined sugar is, but we'd be here forever. Once you quit, it won't take long for you to feel the benefits. Studies have shown that within days of eliminating refined sugar, biomarkers of inflammation decreased and also improved levels of blood sugar and blood pressure. When I quit sugar, the biggest difference that I felt was in my energy levels. It's also important to mention that there is sugar in many more foods than we think. That's why it's so important to check the labels of the food that we buy. It's important to make a distinction because cooking is all about processes. Cutting, boiling, baking are ways of processing food. We're manipulating the ingredients to make a meal after all. So what I mean here is to cut out food that has any ingredients that you wouldn't find in nature. Most processed foods are full of chemicals, sugar, sweeteners, preservatives and emulsifiers. They lack nutrients, can be damaging to your gut health and much like sugar, the foods can also be linked to all kinds of diseases. A product that has more than five or six ingredients and especially if you can't pronounce the ingredients, that's processed food. That's why they cause digestive distress and nutrient malabsorption, which is why it's so much better to stick to whole natural foods. There are more processed foods out there than you may think. Most packaged foods that you can find in the supermarket can be considered ultra processed. I'd say about 80%. Tofu, cereal and most sauces. So the food pyramid is complete bullshit. I'll go into this in detail in the future. It's said that 20% of our ancestors energy came from carbs. Nowadays it's 80% from potato, rice, wheat and corn. They cause blood sugar spikes. So if you're trying to quit sugar, this makes it even harder for you. It's also important to know that there are different kinds of carbs. Simple, complex and refined. I would tell you to always go for the complex kind that you can find in natural unprocessed food such as vegetables, fruits, you can find in quinoa, sweet potato. But of course, once you do this, you're gonna need another source of fuel. Fat is your friend. Fats are a much more efficient source of fuel because the energy they provide lasts much longer. They prevent sugar spikes and play an important role in producing fatty acids, absorbing vitamins and balancing hormones. 
They're also the most satiating food you can have, so they're great to prevent overeating. Some ways you can easily incorporate them in your diet through high quality oils, butter, avocado, nuts, eggs and meats. When you start this process, it will take a while for your body to adjust. If you're into it for three or four weeks and you feel that you get low on energy, don't get discouraged. If this is very different from how you were eating before, this is completely normal, but I encourage you to persist. I know that our modern life is fast and busy, but it's probably one of the most worthwhile investments you can make with your time, money and effort. For me, food is one of the most beautiful parts of life. It's so enjoyable, such a great way of connecting with people. Leading this lifestyle doesn't mean we have to sacrifice that. We just have to be smarter about our choices and experiment a lot in the kitchen. It takes some time to figure out what works best for you and how to make this a viable way of life. That's why it's good to break it down to small steps and learn as you go. I know it may seem overwhelming at first, but believe me, it's easier than it looks. And if I was able to make it, you can too. So take it one day at a time, and if you need some inspiration, just get in touch with me.